Did you know about Tunguska? In 1908, an asteroid entered Earth's atmosphere and exploded over the sky's area. The blast flattened a million years over an area of 2,150 square kilometers. Many reindeer destroyed numerous structures, and the shockwaves way as London. Out there, more than asteroids have the potential to crash down like this. That's why humans have been launching to figure out how to prevent these events and spend a key player in one of those missions, one that has shaped the entire launch industry. Let's dive into all the details into the episode. After the Ukraine conflict blocked Western S to Russia's Soyuz rockets, European Space Agency, ESA, has turned to SX to fill the gap in Europe's space access. And we have the HERA mission, a crucial plans and scientific mission led by ESA. On Monday, Europe's asteroid blasted off from Florida on a space rocket. At exactly 10.52 a daylight time on October 7, 2024, the skies of Florida with the thunder of Falcon's engines. From Cape Canaveral Space Formation, ES Hera spacecraft embarked on its journey. One hour and 16 minutes after liftoff, Hera successfully separated from the upper stage of the Falcon 9, signaling that of its long journey across millions of miles through the solar system. At destination, the distant binary system, Didymos. To truly grasp the significance of this mission, we need to look back. 2 November 2022, NASA made a bold move in the history of space exploration with the DART mission, Double Asteroid Redirection. Deliberate crashed into Dimorphos, a moonlet orbiting the asteroid Didymos, in an unprecedented attempt to alter the orbital body. This event marked the first time humanity attempted to change the of objects in a solar system, opening a new chapter in planetary defense capability. Now, Hera is returning to the scene of that history to gather detailed data on the aftermath. It will assess the effectiveness of asteroid deflection and provide invaluable insights for future planetary energies. Dimorphos and Didymos are far from unfamiliar names to tests. They belong to the group of near-Earth asteroids, NEAs, celestial bodies who are close to our planet. While Didymos and Dimorphos don't pose an immediate to Earth, they represent a class of odd could potentially become hazardous in there. And this mission? An absolute success. Donchev, SpaceX's vice president of launch, shared on social X, good launch, good or and good payload deploy. However, what particularly unique is the type of rocket used. The usual practice of SpaceX, renowned for reusing rockets to lower launchists, the Falcon 9 for this suspended one. To place the Hera spacecraft into an interplanetary orbit, a path that requires much greater speed and altitude compared to typical low-Earth orbit missions, the rocket had to operate at maximum efficiency. This meant that every last drop of fuel from the first stage was used to generate the necessary th leaving none for the typical landing and recovery process. Due to the additional performance required to deliver the payload to an interplanetary trans orbit, this mission marks the launch for this Falcon 9 first stage booster, SpaceX wrote on its website. The B-1061, the booster used in the Hera mission, had an incredible journey since it was first launched though, during the historic Crew-1 mission, which marked a turning point in space history as B-1061 carried astronaut to the international. It then continued it with the Crew-2 mission, another pivotal moment in international crew transport, helping push humanity in space exploration even further. But the journey of B-1061 didn't. It continued to fly on a variety of missions, from DeLargo to the ISS and launching satellites for commercial clients and SpaceX and Starlink Internet satellites. Together, B-1061 has completed 23 launches. And in a spectacular fashion, marking its final performing mission of today's HERA probe, using a booster that had 22 times for such a critical mission. Now that's a bold move, SpaceX. Listen. The payload for this mission is valued at a step. The Starship is key to the survival of the Artemis program. But what about the DoD? The Department of Defense saw the potential of the Starship even before NASA did. The DoD has awarded SpaceX numerous lucrative contracts, most notably a classified contract worth up to $1.8 billion. While SpaceX hasn't disclosed much information about this contract, it's entirely reasonable to assume it relates to the Starship and Starshield. The DoD has a direct interest in ensuring the successful development of the Starship, and Elon Musk is considered one of the United States' national security assets. It's no surprise that he's receiving support from the DoD. According to an official statement from the FAA, in mid-August, 
SpaceX submitted new information for the Flight 5 mission proposal of Starship Super Heavy. The FAA is continuing to review this information. The FAA will make a licensing decision once SpaceX meets all licensing requirements. Well, if Flight 5 is indeed set to launch on October 13th with FAA approval, something has changed. Someone must have successfully persuaded the FAA. Perhaps government agencies, community pressure, or even potential lawsuits played a role. While there may be significant shifts in struggle, happening behind the scenes. On the surface, activities at Starbase, the SpaceX launch facility in Boca Chica, Texas, continue to unfold steadily and relentlessly. In recent days, we've witnessed a flurry of important activities at Starbase. Starting on October 4th, the heat shield ring was lifted back into place and installed on Booster 12, the super heavy stage designated for the fifth test flight. By the afternoon of October 5th, Ship 30, the upper section of the Starship was moved into position and secured by the chopsticks. By the end of that day, the second full stack was completed. These activities clearly indicate that SpaceX is actively preparing for crucial testing related to the hardware for Flight 5. Then, on the morning of October 7th, Highway 4, the road leading to Starbase, was closed. By noon that day, the launch pad was cleared, with vents observed at both the orbital launch mount and the launch tower. Around 2.50 p.m. CDT, SpaceX began fueling all the tanks of Ship 30 and Booster 12, marking another wet dress rehearsal. Overnight, SpaceX conducted another test on the water deluge system. This double test simulated both launch and landing conditions, demonstrating that SpaceX is preparing not only for the rocket's launch, but also for its future recovery and reusability. Most recently, SpaceX conducted a series of complex maneuvers. The quick connect system for the ship was retracted, the chopsticks were pulled back, and Ship 30 was detached from Booster 12. Following this, Ship 30 was moved aside. And finally, on October 10th, the FTS, Flight Termination System installation began. Since its batteries don't last long, installing the FTS is a clear sign that launch day is right around the corner. This is the final step in the entire launch preparation process. As you can see, aside from the testing and improvements SpaceX is making with the chopsticks, they have completed nearly all the necessary integrated tests for a successful launch. SpaceX knows that Flight 5 is on the horizon. Well done, SpaceX. Just a few days to go. I firmly believe that SpaceX's Starship is about to lift off and will successfully land the booster on the Mechazilla arms. This will be the most cinematic embrace in human history. Well, SpaceX has had plenty of time to prepare for this mission. They've learned from past launches, fine-tuning every little detail of Starship and the landing system. What about you? Do you think everything is on track? Can SpaceX successfully pull off this fifth test flight? Share your thoughts in the comments below. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.